whatever, as long as, as, long as, uh, as I get entertainment from it, and when I stop getting entertainment from what I'm doing, I'll stop making it. I mean, I, I don't, we haven't done any surveys to find out who actually buys our records or what age group it is that buys our records. We don't aim for just 14-year-old sort of people. You know, we, we make music and, and it sells across the board, I suppose. Susan McGregor from Stone Law. Number one really matter to you? Yeah, it matters to me. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's obviously like if you want to be successful and you're, and you're ambitious. Obviously, if you're in a pop group, it's like being a football player, you want to be in Celtic. Obviously, if you want to be the best football player, and if, you, you want to be <laughs> and if you're in a pop group, you want to be number one in the charts. Midge, you've been to number one. How did it feel? Terrible. I had nothing to do with it, really. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was a, sort of strange feeling knowing that you're number one and oh, there's tons of money piling into somebody else's pocket. It's very, very strange. Um, no, I think I've got more kick out of my number two, and that was Vienna. Uh, do you think the laws on soft drug trafficking are too strict and should be changed? Midge? Well, I don't know. I think I'm probably one of the only musicians I know that's never taken a drug. Me too. Uh, oh, two. <laughs> three. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I honestly don't feel strongly about it one way or the other. I mean, if, uh, I suppose my drug is, you know, like having a drink now and again. And if someone imposed a law on that, like, you know, but, brought that back in and said, no, you can't drink, you can only have, you know, one drink a week, then I'd probably feel strongly about it. If I, maybe if I smoked marijuana or whatever, I'd, I'd start to think twice about it, I'd take a stance on it. The only stance I've taken on drugs is, is the, I, I totally agree with the anti-heroin campaign. I think soft drugs is a good point. I think that could be legalised a lot more or whatever, a lot more lenient on it, because it is just like, like Mitch says, it's just like drinking, you know. And you find places like, uh, no, so like Holland and whatever have actually eased up on those drugs. I think illegal things are, are more glamorous too. I think if you if you were tempted by it, the very fact it's illegal would help you. Mm. Uh, I think if if it if it was any danger, it would not be harder drugs like uh, heroin and stuff. We've just done a lot of stuff for the anti-heroin campaign. It's and, it's uh, a bad, bad phrase there. We've just done a lot of stuff. For <laughs> 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 so just signed out, not we are not the guinea pigs. Right, taken up the back there. Do you think that pop stars found guilty of drugs charges influence their fans in that respect and should be dealt with more severely by the authorities? Yeah. Paul McCartney's been done for drugs quite a few times and I can't see any sort of, you know, 40-year-old couples going out and buying you know, bags of marijuana just to go like Paul McCartney. Really. <laughs> <laughs> do you think pop stars have a duty to try and dispel this image of the, the drugs? And well, not a duty. But there's no duty involved in that, I think, but I think if they want to, I mean, if they feel strong enough about it, they should do it. I think, I think they're in a good position to do something about it. Do you enjoy being interviewed, or are you as nervous as I am? <laughs> <laughs> I, I really enjoy it. Uh, you, you can almost tell in the first few minutes that the person interviewing you is for you or against you, and you can, and you can cope with it. You know, you, either way, you can enjoy both sides of it. If someone's a, a, aggressive towards you, then it's very easy to, to get them back. Do you think people here are for you or against you? Uh, I think they're definitely for me. I'm very popular. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that does put you off, like when you go on tour in, in America, it's like, as well as travelling huge distances, you're usually dragged through three or four interviews a day, so you tend to get a bit blasé about it after a while. And it does put you off. But when it's in a, in a nice informal situation, it's good. I do enjoy it, aye. Louise Lindsay from Glasgow High. Louise. Um, how do you feel about screaming hysterical female fans and do they embarrass you? Terribly. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have lots of screaming fans after you, Stuart? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's because the wife's watching. <laughs> How about you, Midge? Uh, we, we don't get that many sort of screaming, hysterical fans. Uh, they, they all tend to be sort of married and have kids. Stuart's wife comes and she's... No, that's not true. That's not true. No, I, 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 don't, think I don't think they're that embarrassing. I mean, it's all, it's, it's all part of it, as we said earlier. It's like when we went to see our favourite bands and things. We, everyone gets a bit excited, you know, but uh, girls just tend to go slightly over the top now and again. Stuart, do you think being married and having a son somehow gives you a disadvantage to other groups that have got young, other groups that have got young unattached males who seem more available? <laughs> uh, I don't think the question of availability is really <laughs> <laughs> that important to, to write the songs. I kind of see the connection between the two. No, I, I, uh, I just sit about and write songs, that's all I do. That's all that I worry about. Are you young, free and single, Bobby? Uh, not so single at the moment. <laughs> Are you available then, is that? <laughs> <laughs> Open to offer. For a prize. It's dirty bobbin, I can't <laughs> Midge, how about you? What, no, I don't fancy him. Hold on, He asked me what plane I'm getting home tonight. <laughs> Christina Simi from Stonelaw. Christina. 
Have you found that the attitudes of your family and friends has changed towards you since you became famous? Probably. Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. You, you always go home and find the neighbours talking to your mother over the fence and all that, you know, and talking about, like, um, Gibson Les Pauls. You know, <laughs> and about his, you know, like, that guitar solo on the second side of the LP, you know? Things they would never talk about before. I think it's quite funny, very amusing. Do your, do your friends actually treat you in a different manner? Well, your friends, are, every time you come back to Glasgow, you get about an hour of coolness, you know, because they don't want, you know, it's a bit sort of strange, but then it's OK after that. Andrew Wilson from Court Bridge. What's the hardest part of being famous? Uh, Travelling and touring definitely is, yeah. is, is the worst thing. It's really exhausting. It says he just didn't come off tour last night. Midge? Carrying all your money at the bank. Hardest <laughs> <laughs> job having things spend it, I think. <laughs> no, you, what you meant was carrying all your money to my bank. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Did, did the money and, and the success not alleviate some of the problems that you face, though? Uh, no, it, it just... The more the more money you earn, the bigger the problems you get. Actually, the more tax you get. The, the more tax, the more VAT, um, the more, more pressures tax. put on you. <laughs> you know, it, you'd think it would alleviate it. You know, you can get and buy anything you like when you think about it. You know, but uh, it does it does bring its it brings new problems. Neil Smith from Coverage. Yeah. Neil, yeah, without being recognised, I, I personally can't. I don't know the rest of them. Well, it's, it's all right for me because I still live in Dunfermline, where I've always lived, and everybody. I still kick about with the same mates and stuff, so... It's okay in London, because right. there's so many people in London who are, who are in inverted commas, famous. You know, so, like, you walk down Oxford Street and there's Kenneth Williams, you know, and Barbara Windsor and me. So, I mean, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think I'm okay. You <laughs> carry on bluebells. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think it's okay in London. What's your most embarrassing moment? <laughs> this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, um, uh, I don't know, that's one, of the, that, that's one of these questions that everybody hates. I think everybody in the music business gets that, you know, what's your favourite colour socks and what's your most embarrassing <laughs> moments and what did you get for Christmas last year? And uh, it's the sort of things that nobody ever answers because you never think anything. It's so, it's so embarrassing, you can't answer. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to tell anybody Stuart, about it. Stuart, how about you? <laughs> uh, oh, I don't know. A couple of weeks ago I fell on a bum on stage. <laughs> at the University. I do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was part of the act. <laughs> Charming. <laughs> Audrey Wilson from Court Bridge. Audrey. Who do you most admire? Who do you most admire? Who do you most admire? Um, oh, God. Not one particular person. There's lots of people for different reasons. I don't know. Anyone from, you know, uh, you know Fred Astaire to David Bowie, I suppose. Ken Livingston, I think, at the moment. What? Who do you admire in the music world, Bob? Oh, in the music world? <laughs> <laughs> um, Present company accepted, of course. Well, I, I, going to say us anyway. <laughs> I suppose people like Mick Jagger and things, that, groups that have lasted a long time without ever getting boring, I think, or, or repetitive. I think I like the Stones. Stuart? Oh, Stan Laurel. He's <laughs> my hero. In the music business. <laughs> 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 Hence the haircut. <laughs> 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 How far do you think the image of like, Boy George and Pete Burns is likely to go, and how do you think it will all end? I land in tears. In tears. Uh, <laughs> how do you see the end of the, the Can you imagine I'm drawing his pension in a bag? <laughs> 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 that's a really important point, you know, obviously. People are going to get old in public. That's what I think I said before, they're going to be really embarrassed when they're 40 or 50 walking about in those clothes. Pete Burns sitting in the public park feeding pigeons with a leather brand that I'm doing. Where's a pile of boots on, you know? Yep. When you're compiling lyrics, are you conscious of the possibility of media censorship? Edge. Um, no, I don't think anybody can understand my lyrics anyway, at least of all me. Uh, I don't see why anyone could actually uh, censor them at all. I think the only time you've, you've got to worry about censorship is if you do something that's blatantly obvious, like, you know, swearing it or... Or mention the or, IRA. Or, yeah, or mention the IRA or whatever, something like that. Then, you, you know, you're, it's highly unlikely you're going to get your song played on the radio or shown on top of the pops or whatever. But uh, I'm glad to say I don't, I don't, I've never felt compelled to, to swear in any of my songs. Stuart, do you worry about what the media say? Um, no, I think, first of all, you've got to, to satisfy yourself and, and be happy yourself, yourself with the piece of work that you're working on. If it means having something outrageous in it and it fits with it and with the song, by all means, have it. I've never felt the need to, to curse and swear on, on mine, that's for sure. Bobby? I think, I think swearing's part of the everyday language. I, I think you should write it in the song. It's not part of my everyday language, but I don't see any sort of like taboo about it, as long as it's done. Oh, you can hear that's, that's, that, I hate that hypocrisy about it. You can hear it in the street any day of the week. And yeah. yet, I think it's as soon as somebody puts it on the radio, it's... I don't think it should be anything tasteless, like, 
I like songs about the Moors murders and things like that. It's been done. I think that was pretty tasteless. Mm -hmm. Well, mid-year, Bobby Hodgins, Stuart Adamson, thank you all very much. Cheers. Thank you.